Welcome to the Cardiac Emma Learner Series, a unique video tutorial program under the aegis of Indian Association of Cardiac Imaging. This program is focused on beginners and intermediate images with learning happening through short sessions and case-based discussions. We are grateful to experts from different parts of India who have helped us in putting this program together. Please do feel free to give us your feedback so we can continually improve such training opportunities. This session is brought to you by Dr. Pudhyavan, who is a lead consultant radiologist in cardiothoracic imaging in Kovai Medical Center and Hospital, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. He has expertise in adult and congenital cardiac MR and CT with interest in interstitial lung disease. He finished his initial training in Apollo Heart Center, Chennai, and then took up his fellowship in Narayana Institute of Cardiac Sciences and is a level three CMR certified radiologist from the European Association of Cardiovascular Imaging. He has 10 publications in national and international journals and has been a part of the organizing committee for a number of CMEs and conference on cardiac imaging. Hi everyone, welcome to the CMR Learners Series. I am Dr. Pudhi Evan, Consultant Cardiothoracic Radiologist at Kovei Medical Center and Hospital, Canada. This session will be on real-time scanning and image planning of cardiac MR. The objectives of this talk is to show the basic steps in CMR scanning, the basic imaging planes, and how to obtain these imaging planes. So without wasting much time, I will take you through a real-time cardiac MR scan. So the interface for doing cardiac MR will vary from one vendor to the other. However, the imaging planes are almost the same. So the first step will be to select the patient and enter the patient details. One of the important thing that has to be kept in mind is the patient weight. There is two important reasons for this. One is that the SAR that is specific for the patient will be calculated by the MR machine using the patient weight. The second is that the correct patient weight helps us in calculating the indexed volumes of the RB and LB while we are doing functional analysis at a later stage. The first step in doing a cardiac MR is obtaining good ECG and respiratory gating. For ECG gating, we do something called as calibration. The calibration is nothing but inside an MR magnet, the ECG waves undergo certain changes making it difficult for us to interpret the ECG. What calibration does is that it makes sure we get sharp and tall R wave which will act as a trigger for the ECG gated scans. Once ECG calibration is done, the first sequence that is done is the survey image. The survey is done in three planes, the axial, coronal and sagittal covering the chest and the upper abdomen. The survey will act as a backbone for further planning. The first sequence that we do after the survey is the axial black blood image. So the axial black blood image is done covering the entire chest and is done to look for extra cardiac structures. In this image, the yellow box that we see is called as shim box. So for obtaining artifact free images, it is important that the magnetic field is homogeneous in that area. And since the heart is not at the center of the boat and rather is placed eccentrically in the chest wall, it is difficult to get a homogeneous magnetic field over the heart. So this is where Shimbox plays a role by obtaining a homogeneous magnetic field using gradients at the place of interest here in the area of the heart. Once the black blood image planning is done, the next sequence that is planned is called as the oblique sagittal image. 
the oblique sagittal image should not be mistaken for the short axis images. The oblique sagittal is done to facilitate further planning of other planes. So for the oblique sagittal, the imaging plane is obtained by cutting the heart or the LV in particular perpendicularly through the septum and the lateral wall. And in the coronal image, the imaging plane is placed such that it is perpendicular to the aortic root. Once this is done, we obtain a oblique sagittal plane. And this is the black blood image obtained in true axial plane of the thorax. Once the oblique sagittal is being done, we start planning the next sequence, which is the two chamber view or the vertical long axis view. Here, the two chamber view means that we will be imaging the left atrium and the left ventricle. For this plane, we will need the axial black blood and the coronal survey images. In the coronal survey image, the imaging plane is placed perpendicular to the diaphragm. And in the axial black blood image, the imaging plane is placed such that it bisects the mitral valve and the imaging plane passes through the LV apex. Once the oblique sagittal image has come, it is loaded onto the third pane and for the two chamber view, the imaging plane is made sure that it is parallel to the septum. Once the two chamber view is done, the next view that we do is the four chamber view or the horizontal long axis view. Here in four chamber view, we will be visualizing the right atrium, right ventricle, left atrium, and the left ventricle. For planning the four chamber view, we will need the two chamber view and the oblique short axis views that have been obtained previously. So once the two chamber view has come, it is loaded into the planning window and we can see the left atrium and the left ventricle very well in the two chamber view. And from the two chamber view, the four chamber view is planned such that the imaging plane passes through the mitral valve and the LV apex in the two chamber view. And in the oblique short axis view, the imaging plane is made to pass through the junction of anterior and inferior wall of the RV and is seen to bisect the septa. We also make sure that the imaging plane does not cut the aortic root. Once the fourth chamber view is obtained, it is loaded into the planning window. And for the three chamber view, we make sure that the imaging plane passes through the LV apex in the four chamber view. And in the oblique sag, the imaging plane is placed such that it bisects the mitral valve or the mitral annulus and the aortic annulus through the into the ascending aorta. The next view that we obtain is the true short axis view. The imaging plane is made to bisect the LV such that it is perpendicular to the septum and the lateral wall in the fourth chamber view and is perpendicular to the anterior and inferior wall in the two chamber view. With this imaging plane, we get a true short axis view of the heart. Once the two, two chamber, three chamber, four chamber and the short axis views are imaged, then we go on to the next imaging plane which is called the 
LVOT view or the left ventricular outflow chart. The LVOT planning means only the three chamber view. In the three chamber view, the imaging plane is placed such that it bisects the aortic annulus and the ascending aorta. Here we also do what is called as shim align, which is nothing but making sure the shimming is proper in the area of interest so that the magnetic field is homogeneous in that particular area so that there are least amount of artifacts in the cine images. So these are the basic views that we often do in cardiac MR and these include the two chamber, four chamber, three chamber views, LVOT view and short axis views. Once these basic views are done, then we move on to the post contrast imaging. The first scanning protocol in post contrast image in this particular case will be the dynamic or the perfusion imaging. So this is a case where we did stress perfusion using a dynamic sequence to look for myocardial perfusion with adenosine stress. So the planning for the dynamic sequences is a short axis view of the left ventricle. Since this is a very fast sequence, we image at only three planes, one at the basal cavity, one at the mid cavity and the third at the apical cavity. This is to make sure that all the three planes can be done within a single RR interval so that a true perfusion map of the myocardium can be obtained. Once the dynamic image planning is done, a dummy run is often done to look for any artifacts or face wrapping that may be present. So once the dummy run looks clean of any artifacts, then the adenosine infusion is started and when there is response to adenosine infusion, the contrast is injected and the dynamic sequence is run. Here now the contrast is being injected and the dynamic sequence is being run. And as you can see, you can see that the contrast first reaches the right side of the heart, then into the left ventricle and it slowly starts to perfuse the myocardium. In the myocardial perfusion image, you can also see that there are some amount of perfusion defects that are seen in the septum as well as in the infralateral wall. Once the dynamic sequence is done, the next set of sequences that we often do is the short axis cine. The short axis cine that is done is from the base of the heart up to the apex without any slice gap. This is to obtain the functional data of the heart where we calculate the volume of the left ventricle and the ejection fraction from this data. All these sequences that has been done till now are all breath hold sequences. These sequences can also be done in free breathing mode. However, there will be a drop in spatial resolution of these images. So this is a short axis scene that has been obtained at the mid cavity. And this is continued to cover the entire LB cavity from the base to the apex. There are two advantages in doing the short axis cine volume image after giving the contrast. One is that after giving gadolinium based contrast, we have to wait for 10 minutes before doing the delayed enhancement imaging. So if we do the short axis cine after giving contrast, the 10 minutes can be utilized for doing the cine images so that no time is wasted. The another advantage of doing a short axis cine image after giving contrast is that the presence of gadolinium based contrast in the blood shortens the T1 time and therefore reduces the amount of artifacts that can appear in the cine images. Once the cine images are being run, what we can do is we can plan the other imaging planes also. The M Dixon is nothing but a T1 post contrast wide sequence which is done to cover the thorax and the upper abdomen. 
This is done post contrast to look for extra cardiac structures. In the meantime, what we can do is we can also plan the other imaging planes while the short axis cine is being run. The other imaging plane that needs to be planned is the Q flow of the iota to calculate the aortic flow volume and the stroke volume of the LV. So the aortic flow is calculated by placing the imaging plane perpendicular to the ascending iota in three chamber and the LVOT views just above the level of the sinotubular junction. Here as you can see the imaging plane is placed such that it cuts the ascending iota so that the cross section of a circular iota is obtained which is ideal for calculation of volume. Whenever we do Q flow or phase contrast images, one thing that needs to be taken into account is the wink of the image. So here we have kept a wink of 200 for aortic flow. If the wink is too low, then it will produce aliasing, whereas a too high wink will underestimate the volume of flow through the vessel. So it is necessary to keep a wink that is as close to the flow velocity as possible. So once the short axis scanning is finished covering the entire LV, now the Dixon image or the T1 post contrast image of the thorax and upper abdomen is being done to look for the extra cardiac anatomy. The next sequence that is to be done is the T1 scout or the look locker sequence. Now it's been nearly 8 to 9 minutes after giving contrast and it's the right time to do the look locker sequence and the delayed enhancement sequences. The look locker sequence is done to calculate the inversion time at which there is complete myocardial nulling. This is the TI scout or the look locker sequence where you can see we have got multiple inversion recovery images with varying TI times or the inversion times. We then look for the image where there is complete myocardial nulling and the corresponding inversion time is selected. The delayed enhancement sequence here we use a PSIR sequence where the entire LV is covered from the base to apex without any slice gap. The inversion time is then entered into the PSIR sequence for optimal myocardial nulling. In this case, the inversion time is 420 milliseconds. Once the short axis delayed enhancement or PSIR sequence is being done from the base to the apex, the delayed enhancement is also done in the two chamber and four chamber views. Usually, the two chamber and four chamber views are done in two or three imaging planes. Another thing that has to be taken into account is that with progressing time, the inversion time of the myocardium also increases. So what happens is that while we are doing the short axis delayed enhancement images, the inversion time of the two chamber view while it's being done will be prolonged. So there are two ways out for it. One is that we empirically increase the inversion time by 20 to 30 milliseconds from that of the short axis view inversion time or we again repeat the TI scout or the look locker sequence before doing two chamber and four chamber delayed enhancement images. Here what we have done is empirically increase the TI inversion time by 30 milliseconds for the two chamber view compared to the short axis view. So this is the short axis delayed enhancement image and we can see areas of myocardial scarring as bright areas and the normal myocardium as dark areas. So here again the delayed enhancement sequence is planned for the fourth chamber view.
and the inversion time is empirically increased by 10 milliseconds from that of the two chamber view to account for the increase in nulling time. Once the delayed enhancement sequences are finished, in this case we do something called as T1 enhanced which is the post contrast T1 mapping. This post contrast T1 mapping is necessary for calculation of the ECV values. Once the T1 mapping is done, the aortic flow planning has already been planned and we are left with the MPA planning or the planning for main pulmonary artery. For planning the main pulmonary artery, we will need the sagittal survey image in which we will be able to see the LVOT and the main pulmonary artery in sagittal. For the MPA, the imaging plane is kept such that it is perpendicular to the walls of the MPA so that it cuts through the MPA and the cross section is a perfect circle. Again, we have to make sure that the wing is optimum for the particular vessel that we are scanning. Once the aortic flow is done, the images are loaded into the planning pane and it is run to see for presence of aliasing. Aliasing will be seen as dark areas within the vessels, whereas white areas are forward flow and black gray areas are reverse flow. So once the aortic flow is obtained, the same image is also used for planning the MPA flow where the image plane is kept perpendicular to the MPA walls so that it cuts the MPA in cross section revealing a circular MPA. Once the MPA flow is also done, then it is loaded into the imaging plane and it is the face images are looked for any aliasing. It is important that the presence of aliasing needs to be ruled out in the Q flow images because once there is aliasing, the aliasing will result in a wrong quantification of flow and this cannot be corrected in post processing and the imaging plane or the imaging sequence has to be re repeated. And as you can see here, in the face image, there is no significant aliasing. So, what we have seen is we have gone through the imaging planes of cardiac MR, all the basic imaging planes, as well as the imaging planes of profusion and delay enhancement. There are a few other specialized imaging planes that is used in certain clinical conditions and which are not covered in this particular talk. This brings us to the end of this session on cardiac MR image planning. I hope it has been useful and kindly give your feedback in the comment section below. Thank you very much.